you know, there are few people that have had more influence on the field of journalism and specifically conservative journalism and influence on young conservative journalists than John Miller. John Miller serves as the director of the journalism program at Hillsdale College. He also heads the College Fix. He's written countless news articles and more publications than I can list here, multiple books, and in full disclosure, he is also a board member of The Daily Signal. And so we are so pleased to have joining us today, John Miller. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mr. Miller. My pleasure, Virginia. Thanks for having me on. Well, I would love to jump in just by talking a little bit about your past in the field of journalism. Did you set out with the intention of being a journalist or was it something you sort of fell into early on in life? I was a kid who who liked to read books and was then drawn to writing, I guess, and had teachers who encouraged me growing up. So by the time I got to college, I went to University of Michigan. I was definitely thinking about writing and and journalism. And I fell into a publication in Ann Arbor, the Michigan Review, which was the conservative or libertarian newspaper on campus and became involved in that <clears throat> and did that for uh, for four years. And and that led to led to a, a, a career as a professional writer. Wow. And now you're based in Michigan. I, I love the fact that on your own website, you start off by describing yourself as someone that lives down a, a rural dirt road in Michigan, and yet you're writing for a lot of really large outlets across the U.S. and training other journalists to do so. Where does that love for you of training come from and specifically training young journalists? Well, when I, I, I lived in Washington, D.C. for 20 years. And most of my time there as a journalist was at National Review Magazine. And one of the things I discovered I enjoyed about writing for the magazine, being a part of that enterprise, and I'm still with it now. I still write for it. I have two weekly podcasts. I'm still involved at National Review. But one of the things I discovered that I enjoyed was working with the interns. Hmm. We, we, would, we would bring in usually one every summer, and, and they were really good. We had really amazingly good interns and people like uh, who are in the business now, like uh, uh, Matt Continetti, um, uh, John McCormick, Mike Warren. Uh, these guys are total pros right now, but we got them in college and I was <laughs> able to work with them. I enjoyed working with them. These are bright young people, uh, smart. They made my job easier and so on. I just enjoyed doing it and became more and more involved with working with young writers, some of the groups that do that and so forth. And uh, around about 2009, 2010, I, I, I thought, you know, there's some organizations that serve the interests of young people who are interested in going into journalism and so forth. But I had an idea for a different kind of group. And so I started the College Fix. And this, 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 um, it's, it's an organization run by professional journalists, but we can work with any student on any campus in America to, to train them up, to, to, to find them, recruit them, uh, train them in journalism, let them try it out, see if they have a talent for it, see if they enjoy it, and then help them launch a career. So, so it, goes, it goes back to just, just an experience and, and, and recognize there's a need for recruiting certain kinds of kids into the profession and then, and then having an idea for how to help them. Well, and the College Fix has really become such a go-to source for what is actually happening on U.S. college campuses. I mean, I'm thinking about the fact that school is back in session and so are protests. And just right away off the bat, we've already seen pro-Palestine protests breaking out on college campuses. And that's something that repeatedly over the years, the College Fix has just really been on the forefront of is allowing conservative students often on these very, very far left college campuses to not only have a voice, but also just expose what's happening on their campuses. Well, the college fix is two things. And and the first thing it is, and the thing that 99% of the people know it for is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, as a higher education news website. So if you want to know what's going on on college campuses, you come to the website and read our content. We have a team of professional journalists who then work with student contributors who write original news articles. They're not doing opinion. Occasionally we'll have an opinion piece, but but they're doing reported news stories about what's really happening on campuses. And we cover uh, the protests and the encampments and, and anti-Semitism on campus. We, we cover cancel culture. We cover religious freedom. We cover uh, uh, these kinds of controversies. And, and we do it 
as we do these as news stories. And, and so on our site every day, you get original content detailing what's going on. And most, most people who come to the college fix, that's what they're doing. They're just coming to read the articles and that's a perfectly good way. And I encourage people to come visit the college and read this, this content produced by these students who are, who are, who are learning how to become journalists. The other thing we're doing though, it's a, a the, 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 it's a dual mission. The, the second mission, which is, which is not hidden or secret, it's just less obvious, is we are trying to recruit these young people and train them up and 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 encourage them in this field because not enough young conservatives go into the professional media. We're always, as conservatives, we're always complaining about liberal media bias. The left dominates the media, and that's all true. It does, but the number one reason why that's true is because not enough conservatives go into the profession. And if we're yeah. ever gonna solve this problem, more need to think about it professionally. Why Why don't more conservatives do it right now? Uh, I, I'm a little mystified by this because I, I did it myself. I love it. I can't imagine doing another thing. It's it's a great, fun field to be in. And, and you feel like you're in a conversation about the great topics of the day. You're you're, 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 you're staying up with the news, you're, you're, you're breaking stories, you're, you're giving interpretations and so on. I mean, what, what an amazing opportunity to do. And what we're saying is please come join us. And with the college fix, if you're, if you're 18, 19, 20 years old on any campus in America, you can come try it out. We'll work with you. You can decide that this is not for you and move on and go to law school or whatever other mistake you might make. Or <laughs> in many cases, we find people who think this is kind of fun and they get paid for their work and they they try then do a fellowship with us and then they entered the profession. So we have lots of alumni of the program who are now professional journalists. But that's that's the other purpose of the college fix is to help these 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 young people move into the professional media. What or maybe who rather are some of the greatest success stories, would you say, of the college fix? Well, we have more than, I think, 125 alumni of our fellowship program and hundreds more students who, who just wrote for us. They just were contributors. And then the fellowship program means you went through a paid fellowship. You worked at a at a at a at a news organization, usually in Washington, D.C. and so on. But who are some of the who are some of the great uh, uh, alumni of it? Um Number one, I'd say is, is is Kyle Peterson, who's an editorial writer at the Wall Street Journal. The career's thriving. Uh, if if you read if you read the unsigned editorials, the editorial board editorials of the Wall Street Journal, he is writing many of them. He's a he's a top uh, graduate. We have uh, the, the the current Washington correspondent of the Economist is 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 an alumnus of our program. Uh, Jack Butler, who is my colleague at National Review, wrote for uh, uh, the College Fix. He was also a student, a journalism student at Hillsdale College. So I, so I got him a couple different, a couple <laughs> different ways. But these, they are all over the place, and they are thriving in so many different ways, and 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 making a difference. Yeah, really powerful. And we're so thankful for that because we here at the Daily Signal have benefited firsthand from those those young people that have written for the College Fix who've come on to then intern here. Of course, Elizabeth, formerly Troutman, now Mitchell, uh, was was a graduate of Hillsdale just recently and now is our reporting fellow here at the Daily Signal. But Mr. Miller, you mentioned a moment ago that issue with just how far left so much of the media really is right now. And that kind of causes me to wonder, is, is truly middle of the road, unbiased, straight journalism, is it possible now? Or do we kind of need to accept the fact of, okay, there, there's always going to be bias, everyone's human, and so better for just news outlets to be really clear, hey, we lean left, we lean right, and kind of just give up an effort to even be not biased. What, what drives me nuts is when they pretend to be something they are not. So if, if you saw the ABC News Yes. forum, the, the debate with, with the, the presidential candidates. I mean, my gosh, you know, they're pretending to be something they are not. They're pretending to be neutral and objective. And, and we saw they're, they're incapable of that. They are taking sides. If you're going to take sides, at least admit that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it you know, when I, when I, when I joined, uh, when I became a professional writer. When I graduated from University of Michigan, early 1990s, I went out to Washington, D.C. And, and started working in 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 the field. And and as a conservative in it, I was finding my place. And, you know, if you wanted to get into political opinion writing, if you were a conservative, there are only a handful of places you could work. Um, 
you know, National Review is one of them. There are some editorial pages, you know, Wall Street Journal, then some regional city papers and that kind of thing. There were a few other publications and so forth. But we were also frustrated with the liberal media back then. And, and, and this notion that, you know, a generation ago, we used to have objective reporters of the New York Times is nonsense. I mean, they were doing the same thing back then, also hmm. pretending they were something they were not. They were, they were putting their finger on the scale constantly when they were covering elections and candidates and debates in Congress and so forth. They, they always denied it. And uh, it, it drove us nuts. And, and back in that day, I used to kind of think, wouldn't it be better if we had more voices in the media and greater diversity and so on? And to a certain extent, we've gotten that now thanks to the Internet and the disruption of it and how it's broken up the left wing monopoly on the news. Look, the left still dominates the media. They, they, they dominate all the major sources of it. But, you know, I remember when there was no Fox News. I remember when there was no daily signal when there was no daily wire no no washington free beacon there was there you know there, there's a whole universe of publications that that exists now because the internet made them possible and so you you we, we actually do have a kind of flourishing um uh uh, uh right of center media establishment it's it's, it's mm -hmm. dwarfed by the left but we have voices in the conversations and the news that we did not have a generation ago. And it's it's riotous, it's messy, there's great journalism, there's lousy journalism, there's everything in between, but I think it's better than what we had. It has its frustrations uh, and, and, and so forth, but but conservatives have, 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 have a louder voice today than they've ever had before in the mm -hmm. media. And one of our challenges now is is populating this media with with good writers with good yep. talkers people who can make podcasts and so on and lots of folks are doing it obviously but we need more people coming in and 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 more talented people coming in to just get better and better and better at it yeah and that's where the college fix comes in and the work of hillsdale college do you think that that overall is the biggest shift since you enter the field of journalism that you've seen is that rise of maybe some of these smaller, more conservative outlets and conservatives having more of a voice? Have there been some other major shifts and changes within the field of journalism? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the internet and it's disruptions. I mean, I grew up, yeah. I grew up where the most powerful uh, um, in institution in, in American journalism was the, the nightly news broadcast, you yeah. know, which was appointment television. You know, at dinner time, you would sit down and watch Tom Brokaw or Dan Rather or Peter Jennings, one of those three. You know, th th those were your choices, one of those three. And, and, and that's what millions of Americans did every night. I don't know when was the last time I watched the nightly <laughs> news from yeah. the networks. Right. And, and I mean, we, I mean, people still do, but but it's, it's nothing compared to what it once was. And where did they they always got where did they get their news from? Always from the front page of The New York Times and The Washington Post. So you had you had liberal newspapers driving the nightly news agenda and so forth. And that's what it was in the eighties and the early nineties and so on. That's completely broken up. Hmm. And while, while the New York times and the Washington post are still very influential and still, I imagine a lot of people watch those broadcasts. It's nothing like what it was. And now we have alternative voices and you have the daily signal pursuing stories that the Washington post doesn't care about, would prefer to ignore and, 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 and bringing forth stories that otherwise people would not hear. The, the, the new challenge, of course, is, is that we often don't talk to each other, right? The readers of, of the Washington Post are not reading the Daily Signal and, and, and vice versa is often true as well. And, and that's, that's a kind of new challenge. Also, uh, the role of big tech in all of this and its mm -hmm. algorithms and its, 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 its censorship and its shadow banning and all that. That's a kind of a new problem as well. But it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, cacophonous, cantankerous kind of world of, of media and journalism right now. And it's never been a better environment for, for conservatives. Well, and that social media piece is wild. The fact that really now, if you want to be a journalist, but you don't want to be on X, it's, it's almost laughable. I mean, the two now seem like they're just synonymous with each other. You have to, as much as I, I have never met someone that says, oh, I just love X. I love social media. <laughs> but yet we all have to play the game if, if you want to have your stories out there. Well, I'll go ahead and say it. I like social media. <laughs> there I mean, we go. You're it, the look, first it, yeah, one. I mean, it, it, it can be nasty. 
Yeah. And and I, I and I don't like the way it's often manipulated by the companies behind it. But mm-hmm. having said that, you know, Facebook has been a great way for me to stay in touch with my family. Also, yes. um, if you use Twitter in a certain kind of way, it can become a really good news feed. If you want to know what are people talking about, what's the conversation? Uh, you know, when 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 the debate ended the other night. The first thing I did is I went on Twitter. I wanted to know what are people saying about this? You know, who do you think want? And and there were different opinions and different views and so forth. But you could see you could see opinion coming together and coalescing and so forth. And you you almost you could almost watch conventional wisdom form on Hmm. on on Twitter. And that has its dangers as well, the way you can kind of consolidate these sorts of things. But look, I, I like it. I use it. It's a good tool for news and information gathering. And it shouldn't be your only tool. There should be other yeah. ways you get your news and information, but it's it's a useful way. And and, and if, if 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 you handle it the right way, and there are, there are ways to use it poorly, uh, it's mm-hmm. easy to use poorly. It can become a tremendous asset to, to for, for a reporter, for a journalist, but also for an ordinary American to learn about what's going on. Yeah. Well, you all at the College Fix, you're certainly doing an amazing job of utilizing these new tools. And one of them is a new video project that you all are working on called the Restore the Media video series. Share with us what that is, what the mission of this project is. So we received an innovation award from the Heritage Foundation to pursue this idea. And we're grateful to Heritage for providing that. This is a project we would not have had the means to pursue without the Heritage Foundation and its innovation grant uh, giving us the capability to do it. So we're grateful for that. And what we're trying to do, and and we're in the middle of it and we're still making it up as we go along, but but the the (laughs) vision is we need to do a better job of recruiting young people into the professional media. And right now, how does how does someone come to the college fix right now? How do we how do we get the students who write for us now? The 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 number one recruiter is just word of mouth. It's Hmm. it's students telling their friends about it. Occasionally an organization will promote what we do, but they kind of hear about it and come to us. We do a few, uh, we, we take a few positive steps to recruit. We are reading student campus newspapers, trying to look for interesting voices and so on and, and, and inviting them to come join us. We need to do a much better job of, of finding these students who are at least interested in trying out journalism. And in any, you know, I think in last school year, we worked with about 125 kids. I think there have got to be more than 125 kids in America mm-hmm. who who are willing yeah. to take a chance with this, willing to try this out, get paid for their articles and decide, is this a career for me? How do we find them? So we're starting this video series that is going to reach into uh, the Internet in every way possible to 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 tell stories about uh, why this is a fun profession, what, what, what you do, why why it's compelling, uh, uh, how, how, how so many of us enjoy it. Also, how to break in. Also, is there a future in it? People worry about, you know, our newspapers dying and and they may be dying. But, you know, what does the future journalism look like? Should you be optimistic about it? And and, and the bottom line answer there is, is yes, th- there will always be media. There will always be a need for content creators. There's a, such a hunger for good storytelling. There will be ways for people to, 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 to find jobs doing this, but we're trying to point all that out. So this video series, we're putting it together. We, we just did our first filming um, this week in New York. We have, mm-hmm. we have a lot more ahead of us, but we're going to put together some, some shows and some, some mini documentaries and little 30 second segments and so forth. And, 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 and our hope ultimately is we're going to recruit more great young people into journalism. And, how do you see within that as more conservative journalists come into the field, uh, how do you see the field of journalism changing in the next maybe 10 years? It's obviously changed so much in the past two decades. How is it going to continue to evolve? Right. So so I, I, I'm not great with predictions. And, and, <laughs> and I, you know, it, it, it's, I, I couldn't have imagined Twitter before it happened. But it's but, it's, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, blogging was a thing and, and, and Twitter Twitter's took so much of its energy and so forth. Will there be another thing? I don't know. Uh, I am confident that there will always be a role for people who want to report and tell stories and so on. What does that look like in the future? Um, I, I think I think good writing, we always need good writers, but increasingly this is a visual medium. It's a spoken medium through podcasts. And, and you know, what are we doing right now, Virginia? Is this a podcast or is this a video show, right? I mean, it's, it's both. It's and both, you need yeah. you need to be, you, you know, to, to succeed in this field, uh, it is good to be uh, 
uh, conversational to be good, 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 you know, know, know how to work on television, this sort of thing. You don't have to. We still need great writers who are exclusively writers. But to the extent you can do different things and flourish in these different mediums or, med you know, kinds of media, uh, this is this is what this is what the future, I think, is going to is going to look like. But but who knows? We just need talented people who who uh, um, ha have have a thirst for news. They like to tell stories. And and from our standpoint, have have a, have a have a certain kind of worldview that is that's heterodox compared to most of the rest of the media. Bring bring new ideas into the conversation. It's important for America that we do this, and yeah. and you know the press is is, is important. The, the First Amendment gives us freedom of the press. There's a reason it's in the First Amendment. The founders thought this was important. We need a strong media that has lots of different kinds of views, and we need more conservatives in it. So that's what we're trying to do at the College Fix. What is one piece of advice you would give to a young person who's saying, you know, I like to write. I love telling the truth. Maybe journalism is for me. What would you say to them? I say try it out. And with with the college fix, you can do that. There's like no obligation. Right. You can you can you can learn about it from us. We'll, we'll give you story ideas. Our professional letters will work with you to turn uh, your your product into actually a professional, fully fact check work of journalism, and they'll tell you they'll they'll, they'll give you story ideas. They call make these phone calls, check out this stuff, and 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 you'll get it into into good shape. So these these our editors are professionals. They're professional journalists. They're veterans of the industry, but they're also coaches. They're mentors. They're trainers. They know how to do all this. And 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 our 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 mission is to take amateurs who want to try this out. Uh, and, and turn them into professionals. And by the way, you can make a little bit of money. We pay for the articles too. So this is good beer and pizza money if you're a college student, <laughs> just to try it out. And and if you don't like it, if you want to go do another thing, that's fine. But if you if you do like it, you can keep writing for us. You can try a fellowship program for us where, where we will pay you to go work at a professional news organization. And then ultimately we'll help you with job placement and career counseling and so on. We stay in touch with our alumni, try and help each other out. So, so, so we're, we'll be with you for a long time if this is something you want to try and then, and then pursue. Excellent. Well, for anyone who is interested in pursuing that, whether you just want to read the stories that the College Fix puts out, or you think, you know what, I want to try my hand at this. I want to try writing. I'm interested in this field of journalism. You can visit the website, thecollegefix.com. That's thecollegefix.com. And if you want to hear more from Mr. Miller, he has his own website, heymiller.com. Make sure to check that out. Follow his work there as well. But Mr. Miller, I really want to thank you for your time and for the work that you're doing at Hillsdale, at the College Fix, across the conservative movement, across the field of journalism. It is definitely something that is so needed at this moment in history. And so we really thank you for that giant yes you have given to so many young people in walking with them into the field of journalism and showing them what it looks like to be a strong conservative voice within journalism. Well, thank you, Virginia, and keep up the great work at The Daily Signal. Well, thank you so much. And with that, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Daily Signal podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on new shows. And if you would, take a minute to leave us a five-star rating and review. 